Hello to the Facebook world coming through the IdeaPod page. I'm delighted to be here with you. My name's Justin Brown. I'm here with Professor John Keane, one of the world's foremost authorities on democracy. He's written the book, The Life and Death of Democracy. I'm a huge fan. We're at the Australian Leadership Retreat. John, pleasure to be here with you. Great to be here, Justin. Let's talk democracy. That's right. You are the person to speak to about democracy. One of the questions that came to mind as I was listening to you speak before is, is China a democracy? What can Americans learn from China about democracy? There's a few big ideas out there about China being an authoritarian dictatorship and things yeah. like that, which I'm sure is true to some extent. Can you help educate our user base? And before we begin, if there are any questions, please throw them in the comments and we will address them towards the end. Hit the like button, the love heart button if you like what John's saying. If you're angry by anything, hit the angry button and we'll see that coming through. And uh, John, please take it away. Not too much anger. <laughs> Not yet. Well, you're right, Justin. The, uh, the, the orthodox view, the standard view among journalists and politicians uh, throughout the West is that China is an authoritarian system. Right. And it's described in that way because it said that there are no free and fair elections. Uh -huh. And if the guts of democracy is periodic elections, then by definition, China isn't a democracy. It's something else. And it's Sam Huntington's term, authoritarianism, which is usually used to describe it. I think it's mistaken. Really? I do. Okay. And I do because um, when you look at this um, emerging uh, Chinese regime, uh -huh. uh, it's, it's returning to the global stage after 200 years. Right. And you, you look... You do a diagnosis and you look inside it and look at the way it operates. It's a very complicated, it has a kaleidoscopic quality. Right. And one of the things that's very striking, uh, I think, is that it has some democratic qualities to it. That's a shocking thing to say. That's a, that's a that is a controversial idea and I think a lot of us don't know much about China. China has democratic qualities. Yes. Can you, can you explain that? What do you mean by this? Well, uh, let's take a few examples. Uh, more than a million elections have been held at the local level since the end of the 1980s in China. Okay. And um, the Chinese Communist Party even uses elections, for example, in, in bigger city contexts, to resolve disputes right. by secret ballot. Yep. They have an election and the majority opinion uh, decides things. Okay. Um, there are everything that the Chinese Communist Party does at various levels throughout the system, it's a multi-tiered system, is done in the name of the people, the men. Right. And there's lots of talk of min chu, democracy, that runs throughout the system. They're the obvious things. Okay. Much less obvious is the way that uh, this system, the one-party system, governs, for instance, by using opinion polls. They use opinion polling agencies to, to get things done to resolve problems. And of course, these are techniques that are used in the West. So, China has many faces as a, as a type of regime. You know, what is China? It has many faces. There are many rooms in the, in the Chinese house. But one of them, and very important and not to be underestimated, are these locally made right. democratic uh, qualities. Okay. That, well, that's all very interesting to me. For me, democracy is about... You can look at the extent to which people's ideas can actually be implemented in terms of governance. Mm -hmm. So is this the case that this is occurring at a local level? So there's a lot of democracy in China, but in terms of the big picture, the, the government, the Chinese Communist Party being in power, that of course is, is not a democracy as we would conventionally understand the term. Correct. Is it the case that, that this is a way of, of managing the population and understanding opinion better and better? to keep people on side? Or is it a genuine case where the people are managing the means of perhaps production, governance in their local area? Like to, to what extent is this democracy as we understand it? It's a form of simulated democracy. It's more the former. <laughs> that is, um, yes, it's a system of one party rule. And it yeah. is a system in which there is a huge gap and developing gap between rich and poor. And right. yes, there are those moments where um, people are carted away. Uh, they, dis they are disappeared. Yeah. And yes, it's a system. Right. Xinjiang, for example, or Tibet, where there is, uh, there's been a military crackdown. Yeah. Um, the, this is the dark side of, of the Chinese polity. And yet, for three decades, the party 
has been has tried to become a learning party to learn how to govern better to win consent and um, if you don't believe a word of, of, of what I'm saying here, mm -hmm. pay attention to the opinion polls which are statistically reliable. You know, around 90% of Chinese people think that what Xi, Xi Jinping is currently doing to remove corruption from the system is right. a good thing. That's More than 80% think that they live in a democracy. Are they just wow. hoodwinked? Uh, are Chinese citizens uh, idiots? I think not. Are they victims of propaganda? No. It's that you have to understand that there are many millions of Chinese uh, citizens who feel that this one-party system has no alternative and actually that this party is doing a reasonably good job and certainly life is better than it was right. uh, for their parents and, and grandparents. This all has to be understood and it follows from this that um, the news is not good for Americans and, and Europeans and Australians and others that we have an exclusive monopoly on democracy and they don't because you have to explain why it is that many uh, millions of Chinese people actually feel as though they live and they say they live in a democracy. I mean, this is an incredible idea here for me. So I've been living in Los Angeles the last couple of years and I was there for the election of Donald Trump. And it seems to me that there is so much um, faith in American democracy among the population. Like, that is the big idea. We live in a democracy. And yet, people are so frustrated with the outcome of that election. And then people for a long time have been questioning democracy that really, is democracy there for the people or is it there for maybe the elite to, um, to control what goes on in society? Can you compare the two in terms of the people's feelings of legitimacy with their government? Uh, what's your reaction to, to that? You could say um, uh, that American democracy is developing Chinese characteristics. And by that I mean <laughs> that the, you know, the gap between rich and poor uh, is widening in the American system. Uh -huh. um, there, are, there are patterns of deregistration of voters. You know, in many states you have to have a driver's license to vote. 11% of Americans don't have a driver's license, and they're predominantly um, black and Latino. Uh, so this you know, reduction of the rights to vote. Then there are things in the American system, big money counts, mm -hmm. as it does in China. Uh, yes, there's, there's lots of talk of democracy and liberal democracy, uh, but um, the reality, I think we're learning, um, and under Trump, that becomes more and more clear that mm -hmm. this is a system of democracy that, that is actually uh, suffering decadence, it's, 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 it's in decline. And there are strange things like the fact that there's no, for example, there's no independent election commission in the United States. Right. India has one, Australia has one, the UK has one, but in the United States, uh, the rules about drawing boundaries uh, for uh, constituencies, you know, is decided by the the majority party in 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 the local legislatures, mm -hmm. and they're typically Republicans. So they they rig the boundaries so that they they win the election. So there are all of these decadent features built into uh, the so-called American democracy that are that push it mm. in the direction of China. <clears throat> I love these ideas. Uh, the, the purpose of these videos is to expand people's minds and I feel like a lot of this has really done that. Uh, please come to ideapod.com and continue the conversation on democracy. There's a lot of ideas there already. Final question, John. Uh, in your book, the title is, well, this is I think from 10 years ago, The Life and Death of Democracy. Yeah. The kind of magnus opus, the huge book. <laughs> uh, the Death of Democracy. Can you share the prognosis for democracy for us? We've just been speaking about it. Is it, is, are we experiencing the death of democracy? I think we're in a period that is um, as big as and as dangerous as the 1920s and 1930s. Yes, there is no Hitler on the horizon or Mussolini or Stalin. Um, the opponents of democracy are different. They are people like Putin mm. and they are people like Orban in Hungary and so on. Right. Um, but Democracy, as we've known it, power sharing, constitutional democracy, uh, with entitlements to citizenship, 
this is what we mean by democracy, then it's in uh, deepening trouble. Why? Because everywhere um, gap between rich and poor grows. This is not consistent with the democratic principle that people should be treated as equals and have dignity right. equally. Um, this is a system um, of democracy. Many democracies are being poisoned by dark money. Um, there are uh, lots of lots of citizens who feel excluded, young people in particular. Um, the emergence of what's called a precariat, um, you know, the gig economy, uh, where there are no future securities about um, welfare, pensions, and so on. Uh, I mean, these patterns of inequality and these patterns of disaffection are producing backlashes, and, and the front runner at the moment is, is populism. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's Trump, it's, it's Marine Le Pen, it's Nigel Farage, uh, it's Thaksin in Thailand. I mean, there are growing numbers of these populists. Mm. Um, Beppe Grillo in, in Italy, the Five Star Movement. And all of them are, are symptoms of this uh, deepening crisis, I would say, of democracy. All of them, of course, say that they're Democrats and that they love the people. Uh, but all of them have these, uh, these uh, oligarchic, um, bullish, you know, bullying uh, qualities about them. And um, if we don't watch out, this populism can actually badly damage and even destroy democracy. And that last happened in the 1920s and the 1930s. Well, that's uh, is it, uh, how's that for a dark note to yeah. end a bright morning. Well, you know, it's important that we be honest about what's going on in the yes. world, and um, that we are seeing the rise of populism, and that has had destructive impacts in our history, which is what you know so very well. John, for our viewers, if they wanted to find out more about you, where would they go? How would they find you? Uh, you could go to my webpage, which is uh, John Keen, uh, K E A N E, uh, and. Uh, there, there's a whole load of stuff, books, videos, um, field notes, uh, some short stories, essays, and so on. And uh, please, do, please do visit. Amazing. Thanks so much for, uh, for joining us, John. My pleasure. Thank Just you, everyone, for joining us as well. Uh, we do have a couple of comments here which have been very insightful. Boone mentioned that really you know, democracy is more about profit over the people. Gavin yeah. Scott's saying that democracy is really a fallacy if you don't agree with this. Uh, with what so-called leaders say, you are branded a traitor or a conspiracy nut, massive problem. Lots of conversations to have. Come to ideapod.com, continue the conversation. Go to John Keane's website, check out his books and articles. I've been reading them for over 10 years and I think they're really amazing. Uh, thanks for being with us, everyone. My pleasure.